Um, folks, there's something that's disturbing that's happening on the right. And um, I will have an offer at the end of this video because I think, if anything, I am known as a unifier and a bringer together of people. Uh, that's one of the things that I, when people ask me what it's, what, what, uh, you know, tell me about yourself. That's what I say. I'm a bringer together of people. And there has been an ongoing fight between those people on the right who think they should be out and proud with their bigotry and those people on the right who don't think they should be. And so we have this uh, Turning Points USA, Charlie Kirk, uh, is going around to uh, various college campuses, and there's been an ongoing debate on the right. One side says, look, the fight about marriage equality is over. We no longer demonize gay people because we, we lost that battle. We have moved on to demonizing transgender people. And we will have no more talk of demonizing gay people because we're trying to appeal to younger people and young people just see that. And they think like these people are completely insane. But then there's another group of people on the right who say, no, we should stick to our principles. And that is we should continue to publicly disparage and discriminate against gay people, not just gay people and transgender people. We should, discriminate against all non-heterosexual people. And this is an ongoing... So N Nicholas Fuentes is one of those people. This is just 24 minutes ago talking about this. And 24 minutes ago, Nicholas uh, J. Fuentes wrote, the media is getting this Don Jr. story all wrong. The UCLA event was heckled because Charlie Kirk has been trying to silence and smear a burgeoning America first youth movement on campus. That's only boiled over after he canceled the Q and a yesterday in anticipation of our questions. The real story is that Charlie Kirk is a total failure that continues to be humiliated by real nationalist conservatives. He's lost control of his own events. He has lost the confidence of young Trump supporters. It's unfortunate. Don got swept up in this, but thank Kirk for that. There's an interesting uh, divide here, like I say, between these two different parties. Here is what went on at that Charlie Kirk Turning Points USA event with uh, Donald Trump Jr. And Donald Trump uh, Jr.'s um, Amor. What's her name again? Uh, Kim Guilfoyle. Kim Gil Guilfoyle. And um, there are people who are yelling out Q and A, Q and A, and they are demanding that uh, Donald Trump Jr. asked questions. And and really, I'm a little bit surprised because Turning Points USA is usually about questions and ideas. That's Not why they're afraid of things. Yeah, here we go. Available to all Americans. I think they're triggered, Don. It happens. It happens. But again... That's the, that's the difference between conservatives. Name a time where conservatives have disrupted even the furthest leftists on a college campus. Right? It, it doesn't Positive. happen that way. They, they're being disrupted by other conservatives. Now, I don't know if he's saying that, like, how come conservatives never disrupt uh, um, liberals on campus? And why do they just disrupt us? I, I'm not sure. They absolutely do. Of course they do. Of course they do. Barry Weiss. Um, it ran a whole campaign to get rid of um, professors who were in any way critical of uh, Israel. But uh, Keonde no. Yamada Taylor has had to cancel appearances because she was getting death threats. Of course, this happens all the time. But we can't look to Don Trump Jr. to be a an honest broker in this situation. We can only watch and and feel concern for what these conservative college students are doing on the campus by shutting down debate college campus right it, it doesn't happen that way we're we're willing to listen we're willing to listen that was somebody shouting q and a q and a because they've them. they've cut down they 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 basically eliminated the q and a session i think they I, I think they cucked out of the q and a defense <sighs> well that's the what that's what we would say if we were on the right exactly
even the furthest leftists on a college campus, right? It, it doesn't happen that way. We're, we're willing to listen. We're willing to listen. Wow. It sounds like there's like 90% of the people there. See what I mean? And that's, that is the problem. And the reason oftentimes it doesn't make sense to do the Q&A is not because we're not willing to talk about the questions, because we do. No. It's because people hijack it with nonsense looking to go for some sa- sort of soundbite. You have people spreading nonsense, spreading hate to try to take over that room. No, and that's the real issue no, in the room. because you're not making your parents proud by being rude and disruptive and discourteous. We are happy to answer a question. So that they can hear. You don't play, you don't play by the same rules. Let me tell you something. I bet you engage and go on online dating because you're impressing no one here to get a date in person. Okay, now look, first off, Boom. first off, we have read so many op-eds that have please, please have asked. Stop mocking incels because all you're doing is making sure that Trump gets reelected. Now, when the Trump family starts to heckle uh, incels, one wonders, is that going to get uh, a Democrat elected? I just want to just call them deplorables. Kid. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is and the other thing is, is that how many times I mean, um, we've got I, I, I would imagine right now that that sound you're hearing that clicking are all the people uh, banging on their keyboards at the Washington Post and the New York Times in particular, decrying, decrying all of this complete rudeness and um, uh, yelling and anger on this uh, conservative on conservative violence. It's it's a real shame. Now, Nicholas Fuentes says all of this could have been avoided if Kirk had actually engaged honestly with me or the groipers and our legitimate grievances. There's actual people who call themselves groipers now? I thought it was just like an alt-right cartoon. No, no, there That's it is. That's what Don Jr. Want, and As Charlie Kirk want you to think. consistent with his own, quote, marketplace of ideas shtick. It's true. They have, they have Dave Rubin go around. I mean, he is the, uh, the king of marketplace ideas. Instead, he has dismissed, ignored, and attacked us for our concerns. Hypocrite. Now, look. I'm going to be, I'm going to lay all my cards on the table here. I think Nicholas Fuentes is reprehensible. I also think Charlie Kirk is reprehensible. But because I am well known as being a reasonable person who is willing to debate anybody, and I really am, uh, you know, I, I think we get to almost every, I mean, you can ask people around here, why are you doing that show? Just because they asked and I have time and that's basically it. In that spirit, I will make this offer to both Charlie Kirk, who I've debated and I found him to be a very respectful debate, uh, debate tour, debatee. Uh, and Nicholas Fuentes, who I know nothing about except for these uh, tweets. I am going to make a public offer now. I am willing to moderate a debate between Nicholas Fuentes and Charlie Kirk. I will do it online. I will uh, travel at my own expense because it's so important for me to see this exchange of ideas between these two uh, campus conservatives. Uh, I'm curious. I am curious. I am curious as to uh, their differences. And I think it would be interesting for people to just hear a reasoned debate without the yelling we can do it online, so there's no screaming or interruption. I make this offer, this public offer now. I will reiterate this on Twitter. We will tweet this out. And uh, I want to uh, help facilitate a debate between these two Americans. Make sure this is not uh, not copyrighted. Uh, because I, I, I look at this yelling and screaming that's involving uh, these folks, and I think it's a darn shame. And I just, um, I, I, I've, I've taken it to heart all of this uh, problems that we have when college kids argue with each other. And so I want to help bridge this bridge. Uh, so uh, Nicholas, Charlie, I'm here for you guys. 
Just tell me when and where you feel comfortable or I can facilitate it. I'll do either. I appreciate that. And uh, good luck, guys. Please, let's keep exchanging those ideas. <laughs> Item number one, anal sex or destroying food stamps. As a conservative, what do we prioritize? Well, that's the thing. And I got to be like Mehdi Hassan, though. You have to answer one. I have to answer one. I know they're both important to you. I know they're both important to you, but there has to be one. There has to be one. Well, this, the, this is, I mean, the, the, there's one, a legitimate one. argument here on the right. Do Are you fulfilling the conservative mandate by immiserating people and allowing, uh, you know, the vast majority of people and allowing just a few to hold power? Or do you, uh, on the other side of it, do you uh, immiserate people and allow just a few to hold power in just, you know, uh, slightly also uh, discriminate against very uh, specific people? Well, those things have gone hand in hand through history. Well, they have. And that's an interesting question to ask during the debate. Why wouldn't Charlie be on board for that? But we'll see. Um I think Kirk will probably appreciate you setting up this marketplace, this exchange of ideas. I'm, I'm like I say, I'm, I'm, I, I just want what's best for everybody, and I think we know having this type of exchange of ideas is really the best yeah. way to go about this. And you're neutral because you're disgusted by both of them. That's right. right. I'm not going to favor either one of them. <laughs> I'm not going to so favor true. either one of them. I, I mean, you need an honest broker, and there could couldn't be a more honest broker than myself. You'll love to see it. Yep.